Hello, dog lover. In this live video, we are going to talk about how to have the ideal dog in 2021. I'm going to share with you some tips and some ideas that it will help you to have and get the best of your dog. Whether you're getting a puppy, whether you have a puppy, whether you are, whether you are going to get a puppy, a dog, or rescue a dog, uh, all that. Plus, we're going to uh, talk about how you can get started today to make those changes. Changes, and also in today's live uh, video, I am to, going to collect be collecting donations for a rescue organization. Plus, at the end, we're going to have a Q and A session. So, let's get started. So, in as I said in this video we are going to talk about how to have the ideal dog in 2021 just around the corner just in a few weeks we're going to turn into uh 2021 and we're going to need to have some ideas and uh, some uh, tips to have to get to that point to have that ideal dog so i'm going to go through the training today I'm going to show you a slideshow that I have created. And we're going to talk about how to have the best of our dog, how to get the best of our dog. So let's get started. So in general, when we are talking about dogs, I want to make sure that you understand that dogs, having a dog and having that ideal dog, it's like building a, a house. You know, a house that you, it's your ideal house. Let's say this is your ideal house. If you want to build a house, you don't just build s- simply a house. You start from the foundation. The foundation of the house is basically your puppy, right? When your puppy is really born and it's young, that's the foundation. That's the part that you are going to have to work on a little bit in order to have the ideal house of your dream. If you want to have an ideal dog, it starts from the really young age, starts from the puppyhood. So we need to work on the foundation. If we have a solid, good foundation, then we're going to have a good dog. So some of you are thinking of getting a dog or getting a puppy, some of you have a dog and you want to build on build that foundation you still can build that foundation whether you have a puppy you are going to get a puppy or you have a little puppy or you got a puppy or uh, you have an adult dog you still can build a, a solid foundation you can still work on that foundation so the foundation of the house or foundation of the dog that you have is very important. That will give us the opportunity to build something, to build the first floor maybe. First uh, part of our uh, house is, or our dog is, you know, that puppy as it gets a little bit older, you know, four months, five months old, that's the the house itself, the, the beginning of building our ideal house. So that's the first floor. The second floor, if you want to add to it, which is our dog is about eight months old, 10 months old, or 12 months old, or a year old, that's the second floor. We can add the second floor to our uh, foundation. Now we have a better space. We have more space in our house, and we can enjoy our house and make it even more homey. So that becomes our... uh, the, our ideal house now, but we still can add a little bit more. We can improve this house a little bit more. We can make it even better. We can make this dog that we have a little bit better. And that that's when we have this ideal home now that we have a mature dog and we have a, an ideal house with all the third, three floors, two, three stories in there and we're enjoying the whole house now because we started to build this house from the foundation and we started adding layers and floors to it and we made it now a a big house, a nice house 
that the same thing applies with our dog. So our dogs now are matured and they are feeling perfect and feeling okay, feeling uh, great, uh, you know, mentally, emotionally, health-wise, they're feeling great. So we have now our ideal dog for our, our ideal house. So the way we did it, if we do it that way, we will get the ideal dog in 2021. So the first thing that you have to remember is that when you have, when you're getting a puppy, let's say you are thinking about getting a puppy and your goal is to bring this puppy home and uh, start taking care of it and raise it, right? One thing that you have to remember is when you're bringing a puppy up to four months, you're just raising a puppy. You're not training that puppy because the puppy, you have to remember, has been born in a different environment with its siblings probably, with its uh, parents, in a breeder's home, somewhere else, right? And then when they are usually turning eight to 12 weeks of age, then that puppy is given to you. Now you're taking care of that puppy. Now, the, the idea that I want you to understand is that from the day that you get your puppy to the day that the puppy turns about four months of age, you're not really focused on training. You're focused on uh, raising this puppy. This is very important because the puppy is uh, clueless. The puppy is, is powerless, can't do anything. You know, they remember, just remember that the puppy at this age, uh, you know, eight, 12 weeks of age, it just, you know, opened up its eyes. The eyes are now functional. All the senses are starting to start working, right? And their, uh, their nose is starting to work. Their ears are starting to work properly. They can hear and see and smell now. And now all of a sudden they have gone from this house to your house, right? So from they went from somewhere else to your home, right? So basically what you're doing is you are taking care of this puppy. You're not really you're not really into training yet. Right? So you're just raising this puppy. So once they turn 4 months and older, then the training can actually start. What I, what I mean is by you know the formal training can start and you will be starting to do a formal training from four months to eight months of age. That's the time that we want to start focusing on training our puppy. And this is very important. This is the foundation that we were just talking about. Uh, it's part of the foundation. You know, it's the first layer of the building of the house. So this is very important. You want to start training your puppy, formal training. You do all the all the necessary training happens in this state of, stage of your puppy's life. So it's very important to dedicate time to train your puppy, you know, when they are four months and eight, uh, between four to eight months. So you start the puppy training or any, any of those uh, basic obedience training that you are thinking, that's when you start training your puppy. And then when they are eight months, to 12 months of age, what you're doing, you're improving the, the training, you're improving their lives, right? You're improving the training by going to the next levels of training. And I'm going to explain what those levels are. So you're just, you started with raising, you started with uh, training, now you're improving. You're improving your semi-adult dog at ages between eight months and 12 months. And once they're 12 months and older, you're starting to build, you're starting to be, to be building on their training. So you're improving even more, more and further than your puppy was being trained when it was young, at a young age. You're building more uh, knowledge, you're building a little bit more information in your pup, in your dog's um, state of mind, and that makes a big difference when you start building and working on that. 
then when they are seven and tell 10 years uh, sorry years and older this has to be corrected let me just quickly correct that once they are seven to ten years and older you're basically caring for them and caring basically is uh, just just like humans they become puppies again right puppies and senior dogs are very similar they one is your puppy you're caring for your puppy when they are really young and when they are senior you're really caring for them too there is not much training happening when they are seniors there is some training happening you know senior level of tra training but you're basically caring for them now they become a senior puppy so that's how you want to look at it when you're thinking about your dogs you know levels of training so there are many dog training levels and choices that you can make when it comes to your dog so it's good to know these things even before you get a dog because you have to do these uh, activities with your dog there's there's there are levels of puppy training you start with puppy training you start with puppy obedience level you start with formal basic obedience level and then you continue with formal intermediate obedience level and then you add to it to uh, advanced obedience level then after that you're going to add agility maybe maybe fly ball fly ball is this one maybe scent dog you know you scent job you're going to be doing scent job with your dog maybe protection or maybe even hurry right these are some of the activities or training levels that you can add to your dog's uh, skill level. So when we are, again, talking about training and all that, up to four months, remember, you're just raising your puppy. You're not really training. The raising a puppy, I have a course on my online courses, one of my online courses, which is called Puppy Training 101. We do cover this area um that you can learn all about it how to raise your puppy all the uh, details that you need to know as a uh, whether you are thinking about getting a puppy or you have a puppy now and you're thinking about how do i raise my puppy properly and this is up to four months of puppy's age uh, uh, you can use my puppy training one-on-one we covered that now when there are four months to four months to eight months of age, you are doing some basic training, puppy basic training. And then, uh, and also we covered those in the puppy training 101 course as well. When they are eight months to 12 months of age, you're improving their uh, training skills. Uh, and the course that I suggest you to take is dog training method without treats or food, which we cover all those uh, aspects of uh, dog training method without the treats or food for your dog, especially that if you're looking for a, a training method that is very unique. 12 months and over, you're building on training skills that your dog has. Now, I at the moment, I don't have a course that offers that, but in 2021, it's, I'm planning to have an online agility course that you can basically do at home uh, and do in a way that not only uh, functions as an additional training method to your for your dog, but it adds, adds uh, a different level of training skills to your dogs. Uh, skill levels uh, seven to ten months and over we again remember we are caring for our dogs and there would be a course uh, dedicated to senior dogs again coming up coming soon in 2021 so those are the plans that we will be I will be adding more online courses to the courses that I already have so I, at the moment, I do have a winter sale going on uh, where you can get up to 50% off on all online courses. 
it starts right today to December 24. This is a last minute uh, gift. Uh, if you're looking for a gift for yourself, for your family members, for your friends, uh, for whoever you're looking for, uh, there is a, a sale going on uh, and it will end on the 24th. You can take advantage of it and uh, learn all about it. So there is a holiday sale going on today, starting today. And meanwhile, I wanted also to mention to you that any of the super chat uh, that we get today, you use the super chat option today. We are going to donate 100% of it to a rescue organization that is near dear to my heart. Uh, it's called a Voice for Piles Canaan Rescue Society. They are local rescue organization. This is the rescue organization that I uh, rescued uh, Annie and also Harvey. Uh, these are the two rescue organizations that these are the this is the rescue organization that I support. I help them as well. And we collect donations for them. Uh, they're local rescue organizations. So 100% uh, of the donations today uh, for using the super chat goes to them. So take, a, uh, take action and help a, a dog that needs help. Um, now, let me go through the online courses as well so you have a good idea of what's going on. Uh, so as I said on my, uh, on, on my website, sorrowdogtraining.com slash courses, you will see uh, all of my online courses that are on sale. So Puppy Training 101, that's the course that I suggest everybody who is thinking of getting a puppy is getting ready to get a puppy to join this course. If you have a puppy now and it's four to eight months of age between those uh, area, um, this is the course that is ideal for you. Now, if you want to learn what are the what are dog your dog's five essential needs, this is something that <clears throat> I always talk about it. And I always mention it in my videos, in my, my, my live videos. Uh, the five essential needs of a dog is something that I, I think many people, many dog owners, they don't uh, focus on. That, that is something that I think if you figure this out, you will have a great dog. And let me bring that um, five essential needs uh, content as well. This, uh, the five essential needs are something that I have used it for many, many years. And it has given me my own dogs uh, and also my clients' dogs. They have received great results out of that. And that is because many dog owners, they think, okay, all dog trainers, everybody tells us that we need to train our dog. But training is not the only thing that you need to focus on. You have to be committed to provide your dog daily five essential needs, which includes training. But exercise is the first one. The first thing that you have to focus on is the exercise. That has to be provided on a daily basis, two to three times a day. You have to provide exercise for your dog. And the next thing is training. Training is there, but it's not the only thing that you need to focus on, as I said. Training is part of the for formula of five. The next thing is socialization. Socialization is very important. You know, this is a social stimulation for your dog, and it's very important. You know, dogs need mental, physical stimulation and social stimulation as well. The care is also, when you're caring for your dog, next thing that it's available, it's um, in this formula is the care which you need to uh, provide on a daily basis. But this also provides, uh, you know, that internal emotional uh, stimulation for your dog. And the last thing the dog needs is affection. And affection also is very emotional. Uh, stimulation for you and your dog. So the formula of 
uh, a dog's five essential needs is this. Now, if you want to dig in a little bit more and learn a little bit more what uh, they are and how to provide them, then we go in details in a course called a dog's five essential needs. Now, if you have problem walking your dog and your dog is pulling on the leash and is driving you crazy and you can't have a decent walk, then leash walking and training solution is the course for you. Uh, this also is on sale as well. Um, this is a course that I go through the basics of understanding how you should be walking your dog, how the walk should be, and how you can do exercises and activities that will improve your walking and the, the, the trainings that you get in this course is based on, again, having fun using play and praise without the use of treats or food. Now, if you want to get all of these, everything that I just talked about, and you want to get everything, plus you want to understand the you know, philosophy, the psychology, and all the details, and all the, the information that I just talked about in details, and you really want to dig in your dog's uh, uh, psychology and understanding your dog and how to train your dog without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, force or domination, the dog, then the dog training without treats is the course for you. All of these courses are again on sale starting today till Friday, uh, till Wednesday the 20, uh, and when, what is it? Uh, Thursday the 24th. So last minute shopping if you have not uh, got your perfect gift for yourself and for family or friend or anybody else so you can give this gift to yourself or to anybody who you, who you love so let's get started on answering some questions so remember 100 percent of the super chat goes today to uh, a voice for pause uh, rescue organiza organization and uh, if you want your questions to definitely be answered, please make sure to use the super chat option. Um, we have some, some questions and comments. Let's get started with those. We have Lear Ramsey. He says, first big fan, by the way. Thank you very much. That is very nice of you. I appreciate that. Um, Hi, my beagle puppy is huge bitter. What could I do to help? I don't understand the question. Uh, Maddie, if you could explain a little bit more what do you mean by this question, it would be great. Uh, Krishna G is in the house as well and saying hello. Thank you for being here. Uh, we have a question from Adrienne. Uh, could you make a drain? A drain. Okay, sorry. A drain. Uh, how could you uh, could you make a video on how to get your dog to go to bathroom when it's freezing cold outside or rain? Hmm. I have made several videos about this topic, but I think it needs a little bit more explanation. I, I'm always talking about this topic, which is, uh, I think. It's one of those issues that many dog owners, um, they don't realize how responsible they should be when they have a dog. That is one of the very basics of owning a dog. And if you're thinking to get a dog, if you haven't got a dog yet, and you're thinking of getting a puppy or a dog, one of the things that you have to understand and know is that having a dog is a big responsibility. It's a lot of work. And believe it or not, in this part of the, the world that I live myself, where is um, Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada, believe it or not, it rains most of the time <laughs> throughout the year. And it's not the ideal weather, weather to have a dog. I, I mean, if you thought about it that way, it's not the ideal weather for walking a dog uh, it snows sometimes. It gets cold all the time. It's not, it's not super uh, fun weather all the time here. 
it, we only have summer maybe three months of the year that good weather maybe three months of the year the rest of the year is either snowing or raining or it's cold so as a and believe it or not there are millions of dog and dog owners in this part of the world everybody has a dog because we live in this weather uh, in this beautiful part of the world everybody is able to have a dog and they, they all go through the same thing which is you know being responsible and taking the dog out whether if it's raining or freezing or it's snowing or it's sunny or not you have to put the coat on put the boots on and take your dog outside that's just part of having a dog part of living with a dog a dog does not want to do its business indoors they're not designed to do things indoors and it's it is part of you as a dog owner and responsibility to take your dog outside. You need to make sure that your dog is always, um, always being walked on daily basis. It's part of the a dog's five essential needs. Uh, exercise. Exercise is number one on the list of uh, a dog's five essential needs. Um, that's very important. You know, exercise, basically walking a dog, this happens two, three, four, five times a day, right? You walk your dog that many, as often as it needs, whether if it's raining or snowing or sunny, you take your dog out. You just have to do that. That's part of living with a dog and the dog will very much appreciate if you do that. If you do that part with your dog, it would be the ideal life for your dog. They don't care if it's raining or snowing or sunny out there. They want to go out and do their business outside. Now, I hope you understand this, okay? Uh, this is very important for you to understand. Don't be lazy. Don't be feeling that, you know, oh, it's cold, it's raining. You don't want to go outside. You have to go outside. You have to take your dog outside. It's part of nature. Dogs are part of nature. Humans are part of nature. You have to go outside. It's so much beneficial if you go outside. If you go outside, if you take your dog outside from your dog's point of view, you know, their paws, it needs to touch the ground. There is EMF, uh, uh, electronic magnet, magnetic fields that it's it's in on the on earth and they get energy from touching their uh, paws on the ground that itself it's a one of the main reasons that you should be walking your dog you should be taking your dog outside whether you know it has to do its business or not you should take your dog outside and the energy that they get from the paws touching the ground itself is very beneficial to your dog. And when you go outside, instead of sitting at home all day or playing games or watching TV or screen, uh, you know, watching, being on computer, you have to go outside. You have to let your mind to explore, just like dogs. Dogs want to explore as well. You have to go outside, let your body explore, whether it's raining or not. You know, it's, it rains so much in here that we call it liquid sunshine. We get used to it. We are used to the rain. So we put our coats on, we put our boots on, and we take our dogs out, whether it's raining or not, and we enjoy it. We enjoy the experience of going out, right? Uh, myself, I have a doggy daycare, and every day we have 15, 20 dogs a day, Imagine I'm, I'm walking these 15, 20 dogs every day, two, two, three times a day, and plus my own dogs, right? I walk them. So I'm outside all the time, and I get used to it, and I enjoy it. Instead of regretting it, instead of not having fun with it, I go with it because it benefits me, it benefits my dog. It's very beneficial 
in general. So think of it that way rather than how do I get my dog not to do his business when it's raining outside or how do I ask my puppy or my dog to do his business indoors? Don't think about band-aid solutions. Think about overall uh, solution, which is you taking your dog outside, going with your dog outside and having a good time, having fun, whether it's raining or snowing or cold or warm or hot or uh, breezy or not, windy or not, you take your dog outside and enjoy uh, that session. Hopefully that gives you a clear and better understanding and answer. Uh, Shubham, Shubham, uh, hello sir, I have a five month old beagle, got him recently, how do I start crate training him? Right now he just sleeps with me and I'm worried I won't be able to crate train him due to his cry. So five months old, you know, you got to start putting him in a crate. Uh, sleeping with you at this age is not ideal. I don't suggest it be, um, in your bed because what happens is it creates a, 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 a dog who's, become, who's going to become me, who's going to start wanting to sleep in an environment that is not really ideal for the dog. You know, I don't mind good dogs sleeping with their owners. If you have the best dog in the world, let your dog to sleep with you. But if your dog needs training, you need to you need to build that foundation. Still, we are still working on building on that foundation. Remember from the uh, slideshow that I was going to do today, uh, we're building foundation. This is very important for you to first build the foundation, and then enjoy the benefits of the the work that you put on. So. Allowing your puppy to sleep with you is not a good idea because, again, I call these band-aid solutions. Yes, the puppy doesn't cry maybe, doesn't whine or anything, but what happens is it learns to sleep or do something that is very unnatural to the dog. I suggest to definitely start with crate training and the way you do the crate training, I have a video on my channel that I teach how to crate train your dog. Let me see if I can get to, to it. But basically what you want to do is you put the crate in the room that you're sleeping, like either sleeping or most of the time you're staying um, and just leave the crate door open, right? And let your dog, uh, your puppy, um, just be curious about this box, this crate, and see if your puppy is going to go and be interested in it. Uh, there are two types of dogs. There are uh, dogs who are den dog, which basically what it means is they like um, dens. Uh, and there are dogs who are not den dogs. What, what that means is there are dogs who like to be in a crate and there are dogs who don't like to be in a crate. Those who like to be in a crate, if you put the crate in a room for a few days and you'll see your puppy is going to be interested in going in there. Maybe put a favorite toy or favorite bone in that crate and let your puppy go and interact in, with it in that in the crate maybe they leave the door open the gate door open and see if they're going to bring it out or they're just going to leave it in there and work inside of that if they do that that's encouragement and you're in you're allowing your puppy to learn to uh, tolerate uh, being in a crate if not then you have to work a little bit uh, to encourage them to like the crate right so what you do is put favorite things in there, uh, ask them to go in there, stay there, close the gate, uh, close the door, and then open it in soon and let them out. And then you encourage them to go in and out and stay there for longer and longer. And definitely the other thing that I would suggest is 
make sure that you're providing your dogs daily five essential needs, right? Which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. Make sure that you're providing these five things for your puppy. And then at the end of the day, what you do is put it in a crate and put the crate beside your bed, close it, and let your puppy sleep beside your bed. If you have done all those things that I just explained, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection, your puppy should be nice and stimulated. It's ready to sleep, and you put it in a crate, and you put the crate by your bed. It will sleep all night because it's stimulated, it's tired, it wants to sleep, it will sleep. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, examples of my own experience with my own puppy, which was the same thing. You know, I brought my puppy Annie, and uh, I put the, I put it in a crate. I put the crate right beside my bed, and I made sure that she had good exercise that day. Uh, she had, she got stimulated properly, and then I put, I put the crate beside my bed, closed the gate, closed the crate, and she will go sleep. She got used to being in a crate. She loves the crate, right? And even now, uh, what happens is I have a crate at home. I have a crate at my work. Uh, anytime she's done, at the end of the day, she's done with her day. She's got everything that she needed. She got exercise training socialization care and affection uh, you know food and uh, play and uh, training and care and all that she's had enough all all that she will just go in the crate herself if she had the ability to close the gate she would close the crate as well and she goes to sleep she goes to sleep on her own right i don't even have to ask her to go and not only it gives me a good sleep when she's not in bed with me it gives her a good sleep as well and sleep is very important you know we need to get good sleep even though i don't have my puppies or my dog in my bed i don't get good sleep even now but imagine if i had a dog in my bed you know they move i move they move a lot you know they get hot they get cold can they go and come back it's all mess so I have a video link in the chat area. Go ahead and watch that as well for more info. I, in that video, I also show. Uh, we have uh, M Macy from Australia. Love your channel. Thank you very much. Make sure to subscribe, and I'm glad you love the channel and you're benefiting from the channel. And... Uh, I'll definitely watch the video. Thanks a lot, sir. You're amazing. Lots of love for you and your channel. Great. Thank you very much. Yes, appreciate that. So one more thing I wanted to mention before I uh, end the, show, the live show. If you have other questions, feel free to ask them. But this is one of the things that I wanted to, to also talk about today is the benefits of training your dog. Now, if you do training and you properly train your dog, there are so many benefits that you get. If you do the right thing, if you do it the right way, if you learn exactly what you're supposed to do, if you understand what your dog's needs are and you provide them and you do the, everything properly and if you train your dog properly without the use of treats or food or aversive tools or shock collars or prong collars or force or domination, you will get great results out of your dog. And the foundation is built properly. You will get tremendous amount of results, great results out of your dog. And one of them, for example, myself, my puppy, you know, I adopted Annie. This is Annie, by the way. I adopted Annie and I started training her, right? I started training her. And I get amazing results now just because I trained her. What I mean by amazing results, so two days ago, she went for spade, getting, she got spade two days ago. 
she is a trooper. She is not complaining. She needs to be calm and relaxed for the next seven to 10 days. So she goes in a crate. She doesn't complain. She's calm. The, the, she's not doing anything crazy. It, the reason for that is because she is, she has been trained. It is very important. It is, it, if I didn't do training with her, if I didn't invest time in training her, she would have driven my, me crazy, especially now that she needs to be calm because she had a surgery and you know, she has a cut in her body. They removed organs and they did stitching. So she can't move. She can't be physically moving, doing a lot of stuff. She has to be calm for 24 hours a day. Can you imagine a young dog, young puppy, and very energetic like dog like Annie. Annie, she's very energetic. She's always into, let's, let me do something. She wants to go for a walk. She wants to play. She wants to do this. She wants to do that. She wants to chew on this. She wants to do something. She always wants to do something. She's always in, in mode of, I need to do a task. So for her to be calm now is because I invested time and effort in training her. The day that I took her to the vet clinic for her to get sur surgery, she was a trooper. She went inside calmly, you know, very interested in the people and staff. Um, and she went inside. She Everybody loved her because she was great dog. And before I... Before me, there was another dog who was coming also for Spain, and this was a German Shepherd puppy, and she wouldn't go in that uh, uh, environment at all. She wouldn't go through the door. The owners had a hard time. The staff, they had a hard time to get her to come in. They were feeding her tons of food. She wouldn't go in. She wouldn't want to be there for a moment. It, she had it. She knew what, I think she knew what was coming up and what was going to happen. And she didn't want to do it. She didn't want to go through it. And they did everything that they could. And this dog didn't budge, didn't want to go in. So they gave up on that option. And they said, you know what, we'll do it later. We'll do it some other time. So they canceled the operation. Whereas my puppy, she just went in like a trooper. She just, whatever, I'm done for it. That's because I trained her. I invested time in training her. If you invest time in training your dog, you get tremendous amount of results. Like, you know, amazing results you get in not only in overall life of your dog, but situations like this, like, Imagine if your dog gets injured or something, or something happens to your dog, and your dog needs to be calm and relaxed for, I don't know, for a day or maybe 10 days, right? If they need to be calm and relaxed, how are you going to communicate that to your dog? How are you going to say that this is what you should do? How are you going to explain this to your dog? Your dog has no idea that what's going on. And an extra uh, clue here that Annie is not drugged up. It's not that we're giving her drugs. Uh, we do approach our, we did approach our um, staying very, uh, very uh, organically and also very um, holistically. So no drugs. Uh, she's not on antibiotics, uh, no drugs, nothing like that, right? So she has to be mentally calm in order for the body to heal, right? But if you have a dog who's not trained and you go through this process of certain something like this, like, you know, surgery or your dog gets injured and needs to be calm for a few days, if you don't do training, proper training with your dog, what happens is they, they don't know what to do. They get uh, crazy. They get 
uh, overwhelmed with everything and you don't have that communication system with your dog to communicate that this is what you need to do. You need to calm down. You need to relax. If you don't have the, those communication, if you don't hope to have those ability to explain and expect your dog to listen to you and pay attention to you and get cues from you because you haven't done any training, your dog not only is going to have mental stress during that time, but it's going to have injuries again. A dog who has surgery or something has happened needs to be calm and relaxed for a long time, for seven to 10 days. And we are on the third day today and she is doing great. Annie is doing great. Annie is not complaining, is cooperating with me and is I'm doing all what I can to keep her calm and relaxed and she's doing it. And the, the only reason that she's doing it is because I trained her. So this is one example of the benefits of training your dog, not only just training your dog, training your dog using my method, which is play and praise reward system without the use of treats or food or aversive tools. Remember, the dog, the German Shepherd, who was just before Annie to go in the, in, the, in the vet clinic, they did everything. They fed her the best food and treats in the world, and this dog wouldn't go in that vet clinic. No matter what you offer, food does not work. If there are flaws in the system, does food training does not work? Because in a moment like that, in a moment that the dog is uh, anxious and stressed, you cannot offer food to a dog. They do not take it. They refuse taking food. So food shouldn't be your first option to use to train your dog. That itself is a big clue that you shouldn't be using treats to train your dog. Using play and praise is more organic, is more, more functional, is more effective, and is more beneficial for both you and your dog. And the results that you get is amazing. I am so, uh, it's not that I'm surprised that Annie is like this. I have trained all my dogs and uh, other people's dogs, and I know the results, but I am so happy, so thankful that I did invest time to train my dog, Annie, and invested time to train her using play and praise. And this is the results that I'm getting. So let me answer two more questions and we will end the show. So, uh, Nasomas, Nasomas, I'm guessing. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm very excited. It's almost uh, end of the year. I can't get so much. So, I'm so ready to end the year and also, you know, to have some time off. So the question is, what are some dog exercises someone can do in small spaces like an apartment? There are so many exercises that you can do. Uh, I, again, you know, I focus on providing training and exercise and activities without the use of treats. So I have a few videos that I have done about the games that you can play with your dog um, in, indoors, not only to stimulate your dog physically, but stimulate your dog both physically and mentally, which you it not only improves their physical health and mental health, but it improves the training. This is, these are something that you can uh, use to uh, train your dog as well. You know, they, one of the things is, let me, one of the things about training is that many people, they say, you know what, I want to train my dog, so I'm going to get all these treats and food and all these gadgets and these things to train my dog. But they forget, that's not your, that's not your goal. That the goal is not to get the food and treat. The goal is to get training done 
that in a way that it has results, great results. And the only way that you, you can get great results is by you and your dog having fun. If you both are having fun, you will get great results. But what happens is, as a dog owner, you say, ah, oh, I have to train my dog. Oh, I don't have the time. I don't have the patience now. I have to do this. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you do that. Because you don't really want to train your dog. You don't want to spend time with your dog. You're not really enjoying doing that, right? So when you are uh, approaching your dog with that energy, your dog feels you, sees you, and feels you that, ah, oh, you're not really into it either. So they don't get into the training as well. So if you both are not having fun, you're not going to get great results. But if you both are having fun, and, you know, I look forward to train my dog because training for me is not training per se, it is, it is um, having fun. I'm playing with my dog. And play and praise are the two tools that you can use to get not only great results, but to have fun training your dog. So I have done some videos that I show you and teach you how to play games at home with your dog. I have the link in the chat area. It's called Games to Play at Home. There are several videos. Go ahead and watch those, and you will get uh, great results and exercises that you can do in the apartment as well. Uh, Pranam, Pranam uh, I have a beagle. He's very aggressive. He bites me with aggression. He's five months old. I'm so stressed that someone might put my dog down. Please help me, sir. Uh, you know, puppies, it's not that they're aggressive. They're just not stimulated enough or not stimulated properly. And they're not, um, they're just communicating to you how they feel. If you are not providing your dogs, puppies, daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection, you will have a dog who's going to be telling you that, hey, I need you to focus on providing these five things. Okay? I need you to provide me all these five things. Right? That's what your puppy is telling you. It's not aggressive. It's just communicating to you. You know, your puppy cannot have this discussion and sit on the table and say, hey, let's have a chat. This is what's going on with you. It doesn't have that ability, right? So what it has to do, it has to do some things and behaviors and actions for you to listen, to hear, and understand what to do, right? So you have to start providing your dogs daily five essential needs in order to uh, get great results. So if you want to get great results and you want to stop the aggression, you need to provide your puppies daily five essential needs. Okay? And it's not aggression. The puppies, it's not that they're being aggressive. It's just the way they play. You need just to provide maybe different dogs and puppies for your puppy to play and exercise with. Because biting uh, as it bites you is not aggression is just the way they do it's just the way they play right first of all and you need to provide different dogs and different uh, puppies for your puppy to play with so you can practice on those dogs instead of you human uh, so yeah it's very important to understand that that is a conversation that your puppy is having with you and the conversation that is telling you is i need proper exercise and one of those uh, exercises is, you know, providing uh, your dogs daily five essential needs is to play, to offer your puppy another dog or another puppy or others, puppies and dogs to play with. Let me go through all this information that you need in the online courses, uh, you know, puppy training 101. Uh, I go through all these information, which is going to benefit you. So if you want to take advantage of the sale that we have, uh, you, usually it's 165 It's on sale on 115.50. And this is only available for the next few days. Next last comment is from 
uh, Macy, thanks so much. Loving all the info and wise. I will finish watching tomorrow though. It's 2 a.m. where I am, so I'm off to sleep before I drop my phone on my head again. <laughs> Thank you for being up and watching the show. I appreciate that. Um, um, top one. Is there toys that will help? Yes. Uh, if you want uh, proper do toys that will help, Go to my online core, uh, to, to my website, go to shop. Let me see. Yeah. Hold on. Go to my shop. There are several uh, toys that you can choose. Um, you know, these are the toys that I suggest. Uh, let's see what's happening here. For some reason, internet decided to go down Let me try one more time let's go to my website um, hmm, for some reason the website is down I think you know, there's there's something going on um, I have a feeling we have lots of people are visiting the website and the website crashed. I think that's what's happening. I, I started the sale today, so there's lots of visit views. Uh, visitors are visiting the website. Uh, so yeah, just go to my website when it's not <laughs> when it's up and running, uh, and go to my um, go to my shop page there are some toys that i re recommend um you know these are toys for brain games and some toys that are actually um, um the the best um best toys for you to play for your dog to play with um let me try one more time i don't know why the website would be good yeah oh there it is okay so again, if you go to my shop, I'll post a, uh, post a link in the chat area. Uh, if you go to my shop, uh, there are toys here. This is the toys. These are the toys that I suggest to get. Um, you know, I don't really have uh, big selections of toys that I recommend. The reason for that is because we don't, we can't just rely on toys. These are perfect puppy toys. This is brain to brain game toys. And these are the balls that I suggest, you know, instead of tennis balls, I suggest you to use chuck it balls. Right? They're more, much more healthier and beneficial for your dog. So those are the toys that I suggest, okay? Um, all right, I think that's about it. So thank you all for joining today and I hope you enjoyed the live show and you benefited from it. If you are watching on a, on a repeat and read on, please go back in the beginning because the presentation that I did in the beginning is very important for you to watch that too and re, uh, re-inform yourself. Uh, it's very important to understand those basics uh, the training that I did in the beginning is one of the most important trainings that I think I have done. Uh, you know, 60% of training is the dog owner training and the rest is the dog training itself. So hope you enjoyed this live show. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Hit the like button. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please, and you want to get more content like this, quality, high quality content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, share the video, Share the channel with your friends and family members, and let's grow this channel to the point that it's out of the uh, out of the space. You know, it goes all to the space. We are growing the channel, but yes, um, I would I would really uh, appreciate if you could help me to grow this channel even bigger. And I appreciate your time for being here, and I really uh, enjoy doing this, and I love it. And thank you for very much for your feedback, all, all the information. Uh, Shubham, thank you. Appreciate it. 
And until next time, have fun with your dog, okay? Enjoy your dog. Enjoy the holidays as well and enjoy your